Our next question is from Frederica. My name is Federica and I am from Malta. What do you do when you travel? Do you stick to photos or videos um, only, like one of the mediums? Or do you incorporate both? The reason I'm asking is because in the previous years, whenever I saw something interesting, now this could be locally or um, abroad, like for example, a landscape, I used to take a picture but also capture a video. Now I'm looking back at all those memories, I guess you can call them, and I'm finding duplicates. The thing is, I don't want to um, experience the same thing in the future. So Hmm. I would like to know uh, what you guys think about it. I have two rules around photos when I'm traveling. Two rules for photos when I travel. Number one is I don't take duplicate photos. And so if I'm snapping a photo of Ryan skateboarding down the street and it's a little blurry because Ryan's naturally blurry. (laughs) I'm just going so fast on that skateboard. I go fast. (laughs) They call him the flash light. (laughs) That's a triple entendre there, Nicodemus. Don't even ask me how. Don't even try to figure it out. What's your your second rule, Milburn? (laughs) So... The first thing is I will take only one photo. And let's say that my thumb is in the picture Mm -hmm. or whatever. It's charming. It's screwy. (laughs) It's weird. Here's the other thing that I do, though. I take photos only of people. I don't take photos of places or things. You love people more than things. Ah. Dude, it's so hard to capture. Like in Sedona, I tried to take a couple pictures of the scenery. You just can't do it justice. I mean, there are pictures of Sedona online that do it justice. But uh, my iPhone does not capture it the way, you know, a professional photographer's camera captures it. Right. But, you know, I, I always have the live turned on on my phone. So it's it's a video slash picture. It's only like a three second video. But um, it's kind of funny because I'll be going through those pictures reminiscing and I'll hit the live button. And like it just usually captures something silly because, you know, people don't realize... Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, but it's more, it's, you know, it's like Josh, oh, I got something in my teeth. Like you just, cause it captures audio as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So like you, you, I always capture a little snippet of something with the live, uh, with the live photo. But yeah, I, I do like, I, I'm not, uh, as, um, strict or rigid when it comes to those rules, but man, I'll tell you, um, you are right. Like capturing the scenery, you're very rarely going to be able to capture. I went to Malta, which mm-hmm. is a very photogenic um, island. I mm-hmm. literally, Mariah and I were like, um, planning a little trip and I was like, where's the warmest place in Europe in September? And Malta came up and I'm like, what the heck is Malta? Like I hadn't even yeah. heard of it. Yeah. So I was like, well, that's where we're going. Cause I've never heard of it. And they got some like really old ancient ruins, like some of the oldest ruins on, on the planet. And, uh, it was where's gorgeous. It? Malta. It's just, it's an Island just South of Italy. Like you can actually see Italy on a clear day from like certain parts of Malta. It's a kind oh, of wow. a tiny Island. It's its own sovereign country. There's a little Island next to it called Gonzo that is also sovereign, but part of Malta. I didn't, I didn't really understand that, but, um, long story short, like it's so photogenic and like, you know, I, I when I was first there, I'm like, Oh, I gotta take a picture of this and take a picture of that. And man, um, not one of those have I put on Instagram or or, 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 or is in, framed or framed or is Instagram yeah. worthy. Um, but yeah, I I love I love that you know taking pictures of people that makes sense. Yeah, I take pictures only of people. I don't take duplicates. Those two things help me travel so much more lightly on my phone because I'm not also pulling my phone out constantly to take pictures of things. It was funny. Bex and I went to Sedona like three or four years ago, and. Afterward, Ryan's like, oh, you got to show me what it looked like. And so I go, okay. And I pull up my phone and I go to Google. He sent me an image search. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, friend. But by the way, those photos were so they much were better and they better communicated what it felt like than if I were like, here's a crappy photo I took at the wrong time of day and the lighting was mm-hmm. off. You'd be like, oh, I don't really want to go there. But as soon as I showed you the best photos, it was like, oh, I yeah. could see myself there. Someone else has already taken the photos for me, so I don't have to capture everything. <laughs> I can let it go right now. I can experience it. I can release it without needing to acquire it because that's what we're doing with our phone. Later in this private episode, we're going to talk about the layer cake of consumerism. And one 
layer of that is sort of experiential consumerism. Well, what is one way that we experience consumerism, which is also a double entendre here, Mm. but we do consumerism with experiences. I need to capture this. I need to take the photo, capture the photo. Mm. I need to bring this home with me. I can't let this go. As opposed to I can experience this. And when I'm done experiencing it, it's already gone. You get to let it go. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So my my two rules of of, um, photo taking is number one, Um, never take a photo if the act of taking that photo takes you out of the moment in a way that minimizes your experience. Oh, yeah. You don't always have to choose, but sometimes you do. And when you do have to choose, choose the present moment to be fully available to the magic of it. The second thing is take as many videos or pictures as you want, but everything that you take, you got to use it. Even if you turn out not to like it, you got to use it. So one of my things is I love taking screenshots of beautiful quotes that I see on my phone. And so if I take that screenshot, I can't just let it sit there on my phone taking up space. I'm now committed to using it by the very act of taking it. So there may be someone I think of who might also appreciate this quote, or maybe I'll share it on social media or something along those lines. Uh, Maybe there's another site I know that uses those types of quotes and I'll say, hey, here's something that made me think of you you might like. Um, If I take a picture of like a beautiful church or I take a picture of like something at the beach, I got to share it. And sometimes when I take those photos, I think, oh, I don't really think I want to share this. Well, go ahead and keep the commitment and share it. And we'll incorporate that awareness into the next time we take photos. And that balances the consumption with creativity. Like you said, Josh, we have this tendency to want to capture everything, to consume everything. And there's nothing wrong with capturing and consuming, but it gets out of balance when you're not creating with what you capture when you're not taking what you consume and do, doing something with it that serves or enhances the life of someone else. Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of The Minimalist's private podcast available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.